Hello and welcome to Business Africa with me, Ronald Kato. This week, could the era of China underwriting big infrastructure projects in Africa be coming to an end? A new report shows Chinese lending to African governments fell sharply in 2020 as the pandemic took its toll. We report on how China's lending might evolve. Plus, West African states scramble to guard their seas from illegal foreign fishing boats. Unregulated industrial trawlers from Asia and Europe are estimated to cost countries about $2.5 billion per year. Also, Africa continues to drive the growth of mobile money, with over $700 billion processed in transactions in 2021 alone. We tell you why new tax regimes pose a threat to the service. Stay with us for the details. Thank you for joining us. For years, African countries have counted on Beijing's lajis to build roads, railways, dams and bridges. But in 2020, China signed just 11 new loan agreements with African borrowers, amounting to just $1.9 billion, starkly contrasting with the $8 billion it lent out in 2019. There's now concern that Beijing is putting brakes on the flow of credit to Africa. Over the last two decades, China has established itself as Africa's largest bilateral lender, helping bankroll key infrastructure projects on the continent. But a new report by Boston University GDP Center suggests Chinese credit to Africa may be drying up or at least slowing down. In 2020, Beijing signed 11 new loan commitments worth $1.9 billion with the African governments, down 77 percent from 2019 volumes, when Chinese lenders signed 32 loan agreements worth over $8.2 billion. The center's database estimates that Chinese financials disbursed $160 billion in loans to African governments between 2000 and 2020. Lending peaked in 2016 before dropping in subsequent years. The COVID-19 pandemic appears to have affected China's willingness to lend, but Africa's appetite for debt has still been high. There is also concern that China might be cutting the scope of the Belt and Road Initiative. But the figures of $1.9 billion is still startlingly low. According to the data, transport at $700 million took the large shares of loans signed in 2020, followed by ICT and power. At the FOCAC meeting in Senegal in November, China said it was open to exploring alternative financing means such as public-private partnerships and expanding foreign direct investments. But for African countries hungry for infrastructure, there is no alternative for cheap concessional loans provided by Beijing. Oyen Terrelado Moses is an expert in Chinese overseas financing at the Boston University's GDP Center. She co-authored the report which assessed Chinese loans to Africa in 2020. Thank you very much, Terela, for your time. $1.9 billion in 2020. What does that say about Chinese lending to Africa during these pandemic years? Is it just COVID or are there are other factors at play here? So the external factor you mentioned um, is COVID-19 um, being one of them. And we think that COVID-19 had an effect on um, African uh, government borrowers in terms of their economic and kind of fiscal responses to the pandemic that potentially constrained um, their ability to service debts uh, that they already took on, but also impacted uh, the willingness to want to borrow more, especially as some African countries went into debt distress and probably were um, encouraged by institutions such as the IMF to avoid more uh, taking on more more lending especially um that were that's more commercial in in nature the debt trap claims Torella, the talk that china is trapping african countries in debt have you seen any evidence of that no there is no evidence um that has been tracked down for uh this debt trap narrative um there's actually some recent uh uh, information that came out from the China Africa Research Initiative, where they looked into the uh, Kenya's standard gauge railway loan contract that was provided, uh, that was signed with a Chinese lender, and they found that the Mombasa port was not collateral um, for that loan contract. To what extent then is China responsible for the debt challenges in Africa today? Yeah, I like to look at this from um, the perspective of, supp of supply and demand. 
So if we look at it from the African government perspective, there's a need for infrastructure financing, for financing the power sectors. And so China, since um, the, the mid 2000s has come into that gap and said, you know, some of these traditional borrowers aren't providing this financing for you, but we can. Um, so I think, again, it's, it's two sides of the coin where there is a demand from African governments. Um, and I think there's a responsibility that, that lies there as well. But there also is um, the fact that Chinese lenders have filled a gap um, and in the future need to be more aware about the sustainability um, of, of their lending so that, um, you know, these aspects of sustainability are taken into account when lending to African borrowers. Tarela, if, if China gave $1.9 billion in 2020, what does that tell us about how Beijing is going to behave with its money going forward? Again, I, we really think that this may be just an inflection point, again, having to do with the changes in the Belt and Road Initiative, um, kind of a reassessment of Chinese lenders in terms of how they want to lend in the future. And so moving forward, we do expect these um, loan commitments to rebound to an extent, but we also expect that there, that Chinese uh, China specifically will encourage other sources of financing, such as foreign direct investment, which we saw go up in 2020 when Chinese loans to Africa went down. Um, we will we also expect um, more Chinese lending cooperation with uh, Africa's regional banks as well. Um, we expect lending to come from uh, Chinese equity funds that are development oriented in nature. Ointer Elado Moses, nice to have you. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Now, unlicensed foreign trawlers are taking advantage of poorly policed West African coastal waters to fish and pollute. The practice costs countries over $2 billion a year. Their countries are now trying to learn from Morocco, which successfully rid its waters of unregulated trawlers. Fishermen are busy working on the shores of this Lome beach in Togo. Despite hours at sea, there was no fine catch today. Even if the West African waters are rich in fish and other marine resources, local fishermen have to put up with plunging fish catches. According to them, illegal fishing by foreign vessels is to blame. Their work often makes things complicated for us, and we don't manage to catch many fish. The Western African region faces illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing, estimated to 30 percent of catches in the area according to the Food and Agriculture Organization. Overexploitation and illegal fishing undermine efforts to manage fish stocks sustainably. Within the ECOWAS block, we lose about $2 billion and $500 million a year, which is quite substantial. In addition to that, ecosystems are destroyed. To face this growing threat, national efforts as well as joint policies can be a solution. Morocco is the largest fish-producing country on the continent. The kingdom stands out with strict measures and a strong surveillance system in a bid to tackle the issue of illegal fishing. There is a comprehensive body of measures of monitoring, surveillance and control. Fighting at the level of a single state is not feasible and cannot yield results. For success to be within reach, I think collaboration between all states is necessary. The Moroccan experience shows that beyond cooperation actions as well as legal and regulatory provisions, real political will and necessary fundings are needed to tackle the phenomenon of illegal fishing. So mobile money growth was fastest in Africa in 2021, according to a new report by GSMA. The value of the transactions was $701.4 billion in 2021, compared to $495 billion in 2020. The mobile money industry processed more than $1 trillion US dollars in transactions in 2021, and Africa remains the front runner. According to GSMA State of the Industry report on mobile money, Africa now accounts for 70% of the world's $1 trillion US dollars mobile money value. The value of Africa's mobile money transactions ticked up 39% to $701 billion in 2021 from $495 billion in 2020. 
According to the report, much of the growth came from countries such as Ethiopia, Nigeria, Kenya and Angola and was driven by new customer uptake and a growing number of mobile money use cases. The number of registered mobile wallets topped 621 million in 2021 from 562 million captured in 2020. The report predicts mobile money to continue its rapid growth in Africa and to further disrupt traditional banking services. But it also warns that new tax regimes on the service in countries such as Uganda, Cameroon and Ivory Coast could hurt its profitability and the ability to deepen financial inclusion. And that wraps up this episode of Business Africa with me, Ronald Kato. The news continues on air and online. Bye for now, and I'll see you on the next episode of the show.